everyone it's Melissa welcome to vlogmas day 15 this is actually going to be November favorites I've got to spend the rest of the day wrapping presents and are working to make a dent in the present wrapping and that would just be so boring to watch that so I thought well I will do favorites so that's what I'm going to do now I'm gonna go ahead and get started the first one is my eyes I did the Fox is it the Fox or the Foxy look I think it's the Fox look and I studied how to do it by watching Smitha Deepak uh, she's amazing oh she's so good with eyes and she just makes it she breaks it down and explains things so clearly so of course I will link her channel but there were three things that she suggested that helped me with this the first one is to use tape and she uses scotch tape and I tried scotch tape it just irritated my skin and made it so like sunburned so Doug was painting at the time and I thought painters tape because it does not stick as much uh, because you have to pull it off of the walls and you don't want to mess up and have it pull off you know your paint that you've already done so I tore off a piece and it is just the right amount of sticky it doesn't irritate your skin it's very easy to take off you know it doesn't pull your muscles or pull your skin or anything so painters tape to do up this way and up this way for Smith's look the second one are these and we always used to use these in like the 60s and the 70s these are the sponge applicators don't dismiss them because they do a great job in applying the makeup you can take the broad side and swipe up and switch it to the edge and go up underneath it and then you can take the third element I got these on Amazon and the third element for blending is this brush it is from Rose and Ben and it is a and it is a slanted brush so what she says to do use the wide end and I use the stone cold and one of her videos she shows using that so you take the lighter color of medium to dark color the lighter color of your two outside colors and you swipe it with the broad side of the little sponge and so you put it on like that then underneath it you turn it and dip it in a black and then you do it like that underneath and then you take you take it and you blend the two together like that then you can remove the tape and put a, a highlighter color on your lids and there you go so these three elements I really enjoyed using in um, November to achieve this eye look that I have now and of course I will link Smitha's videos you will love her I'm sure you already watch her but if you don't you will love her the next one is this wooden brush I love this this has been amazing for my frizzy hair not only is the base wooden but the bristles are wooden too made out of wood and what that does when you brush your hair it smooths it these bristles are smooth wood and so it just polishes your hair makes it easier to control and it makes it very um, very smooth I, I was really surprised I can brush my hair like when it's curly and try to brush it out and it's real frizzy and I can take this and it really helps to tame it you can just see it gliding through and sort of taming those strands and polishing them this one it's by Kent I think I heard about it on whispers red I think this is the brush she uses uh, it's by Kent is the company name and the type is Woody Hog so it's it's a great brush I have enjoyed that enormously the next one I like off the shoulder tops they're very comfortable for me I wear them a whole lot and I have done videos of how to keep up a strapless bra that is to take the extra straps that come with it and tie that underneath at the base underneath your boobs but I have found a bra that stays up better than any other bra strapless bra I have ever tried um, and sometimes I don't even have to put the strap underneath to hold my bra up 
And I heard about this a long time ago from watching Nisha. This is a bra that she said she found worked the best. I bought it at the time and I didn't really wear it a lot, but I got it back out and I bought more. I found it on Amazon. It's amazing. It does the best job, absolutely the best job of staying up on a strapless bra of any other that I've ever tried. It really does a great job. Okay, I became fascinated with this TikTok channel. It's, they show people in their homes doing all these gadgets, you know, they'll go over and they'll have an automatic dispenser to wipe, to do their um, hands. Then they'll go over and something else automatic does this and something else automatic does that. So I got obsessed and I ordered several things from them. Two of them didn't work out. So I'm going to use them for my white elephant gifts for the party that we're having. But this one I love. Uh, and I will link the the store that it comes from but you can see um, it is the you know it's real water absorbent and um, you hang it up I hang it up in my kitchen and then when you do when you wash your hands you just kind of have to swipe it right quick and that's all it takes it dries your ha hands instantly I wash it in the washing machine but no uh, fabric softener no bleach no anything like that just detergent you know uh, just just laundry detergent and then you hang it up to dry, hang it up in the place where, where it goes in the kitchen. It dries within, it seems like minutes, because when I come back, it's always dry. So every time I do laundry, I just throw it in there in a wash where it's not going to have fabric softener. Get it out and hang it back up. It's amazing. I love this. My daughter-in-law used it when she was over here. She said, I've got to get some of those for my kids. And uh, if you've got children or grandchildren in the house, hang it up. Wash, they just kind of swipe their hands over it. Their hands are dry and it's really, it's really something. I love this. You're going to get a kick out of this website that this come from, comes from. They've got all kinds of stuff. Okay, my next is just such a grateful thing I found and this was the gluten-free oyster crackers. I was able to make my oyster cracker dish that I make every Christmas. It's so hard. I, I explained before, it is so hard to do gluten-free crackers. They just don't have a good texture or a good taste to them. These are perfection. They absolutely did a great job on them. And um, they're, they taste as good, if not better, than oyster crackers. They have, you know, very not bad ingredients at all. And I think I'm going to check out their other products on their website made good if you like little crackers these are these are fantastic i'm so grateful this very very grateful it's small things when you have to be gluten free it's small things like this that really help make it the journey easier okay my granddaughter uh was talking about skating and i said when I was a little girl, we had I used skates that you clipped onto your you, you attached them to your shoe and you had a key that you wore around your neck and you would tighten it up and tighten the length and the width width with that key. And I said my mother had skates like that too that she had to use. And she was fascinated with it and she said if you can find some I I would like to have some of those for Christmas. So I've already wrapped them. Uh, I think I've talked about them, but uh, I got her some. They were just $11. I found them on eBay. I'll try to find a picture. They are in such good shape. I, I don't know if she'll be able to skate on them or not, but for $11 and the, the story that she listened to and how she was drawn in by me skating on these type of skates and her great-grandmother skating on these types of skates, it really made an impression on her. My mother grew up, was very, very poor, and that's all that she was able to have for Christmas was a new pair of skates, and it was always this kind, and it just made an impression on my granddaughter, and she wanted to see what it was all about. So I got her those skates. Those skates are going to be a favorite. They're already a favorite to me, and I think they're going to be a favorite to her. Okay, my mother it was shorter than I was, and... A lot of times, she I was always too tall, but she said she would buy things from the boys' department, shirts and sweaters and stuff like that, because you could get 
cute things at a less, lesser price and she she would always make a joke that her buttons buttoned on the different side because she bought, would buy boy shirts. So one of my grandsons had a birthday in November and he wanted cowboy boots. So I got him some. Well, the sizing was just way, way off and they were fit me. So I thought, okay, I've got to order him some new ones. But I looked at him and I tried them on and I kept them for myself. This is what they look like. I have worn them. They were easy to break in. They are comfortable. I have really, really enjoyed them. I just tuck my jeans into them and take off. And so we ordered him some new ones. And so when his came in and I said, now let me ask you something. I said, I kept the old pair for myself because I really liked them. I won't wear them at the same time you do. Is it okay with you if I keep them? He said, oh, I don't care. You can wear them at the same time I do. It doesn't matter to me one little bit. So, boys cowboy boots. And if you like these, it looks like they're a size four. So, maybe, maybe I, I, will, I will post the size. It says four on the bottom. Uh, I think it's big boys size four and I wear a seven and a half, but I will double check to make sure. I got these on Amazon, but I will make sure if you are interested in these to for yourself and you're about a seven and a half, these will fit you. Okay, I've got two podcasts. In November, I just mainly listened to my regular podcasts, but I did two new ones. They were both podcasts by Keith Morrison. The first one was The Seduction, y'all know how wonderful Keith Morrison's voice is, how he explains things, how he makes it dramatic and tells such a good story. The first one is The Seduction. This was such a sad case uh, of manipulation of a young vulnerable person to commit a crime. And um, it just, yeah, it, it was good. Keith Morrison interviewed the person and it was presented well and he did such a good job of talking about it. Keith Morrison did. The second one is still going on. Uh, I think the last episode is going up, but it started in November. It's uh, Murder and Magnolias. This was, uh, yeah, it was a crazy case also involving several people and a plot. So, uh, that was well told. The interviews were really good. The storytelling leading up and what happens, you know, during all the different aspects of it. Very well told, very well done by Keith Morrison in both of them. So I would highly recommend those. Three shows, uh, we finished Doc Martin. In fact, Doc Martin is finished. It was the very end of the series. I'm very sad. I understand there's a Christmas one coming out for you in the UK first and then I guess for us over here. But I enjoyed this show over the years so much. I think I want to start over and watch them all over again. Um, just such good acting and the, the scenery beautiful. The characters are just so, were so charming. The whole thing was just so charming and lovely and um, I, I loved it. I'm going to miss it so much. I always looked forward to watching it. The next one, Shetland, uh, we had a big conclusion to it. The series is still going on, but it was a big season of it. And, uh, you know, the ending was, was interesting. So um, I would recommend that, Shetland. We finished that, I believe, in November too. And then the last one I just saw today, this is in November. I just wanted to tell you about it, that I saw, I guess it's, season 23, 28, I don't know, something like that, of Midsummer Murders, the new season, the first episode has shown up. And so I will, we'll probably be watching that tonight, but it looks like the next season, whichever one it is, of Midsummer is, is back. Midsummer is so, it's one of those charming, cozy murders, I guess, like an Agatha Christie murder, like, you hate to say murder is cozy, but it's just so over the top. Uh, you know, the midsummer towns are like little Cotswolds towns. I think it's even filmed uh, in the Cotswold area. The towns are, and there's like five murders that happen every episode. You know, you don't know even how, how many that how many people can get murdered in such a small area, but evidently they do in these series. The in the hero, the detective solves it in his sidekick and. At the last minute, he goes, oh, 
you know, something is said and it makes him realize who did it and why and stuff like that. So we love Midsummer. It's it's uh, the scenery on that one too. It's just absolutely beautiful. So uh, the first episode is, I saw it looks like it came the 11th of December. Maybe they're just going to be doing it once a week because I just saw one episode. So wanted to mention that. And I guess that is it for today. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching this. Um, it's Vlogmas Day 15. I'm very, very grateful. Uh, we got some things coming up. We got, I think my, Doug and I are going out to eat tomorrow night in Chattanooga with my brother and sister-in-law. And so we'll maybe take the camera along with that. We'll see. But anyway, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Take care. And thank you for watching Vlogmas Day 15.